Well, good morning, everybody. Darren Saul here, your host of Playing With Perspective, the Suspended Animation Podcast, episode 93. And I have the lovely Kathy Guggenauer here. Hi, Kathy. Woohoo! So excited to be here, Darren. Thank you so much for inviting me on. My yes, pleasure. I love being on here. <laughs> I love it. And you're joining us all the way from Black Missouri in the United States. How cool. That is right. Yes, here in the middle of the Mark Twain National Forest, where <laughs> it is 112 degrees today. Wow. Now, I think we need a bit of that sunshine <laughs> over here. But uh, I'm really excited to get into this content because we're going to be chatting about virtual assistants and virtual experts. What one woman can do, another woman can do too. So that's going to be really fascinating, particularly in this in the time we're living in, you know, everybody needs more and more help and virtual assistance could be a great way to go. But for everybody out there, who is Kathy? Kathy is the founder <laughs> of Expert VA and Virtual Expert Training, where she trains and coaches women who want to build their own virtual assistant home-based businesses. Kathy runs her virtual empire from her dream home, which is a tiny home in the middle of a Missouri national forest. She can be found sporting a tiara 98% of the time. <laughs> and she wears PJs, not gowns. Yes, you got it. PJs and tiaras because that's the type of kingdom she's ruling. And why not? She knows that when you become a powerful woman, you make your own rules. So welcome to the show, Kathy. Darren, thank you so much for that great introduction. And by the way, I often add in, we do this, um, what, what one woman can do, another can do, and a few lucky men. Absolutely. Damn right. I'm glad you put that in. <laughs> so tell us about the tiara. Where'd the tiara come from? Well, Darren, I, um, you know, those of you watching us here on video, you'll be able to see I'm not a youngster. In fact, I'm 63 years old and I didn't start my own business until I was 44. Wow. And I've never looked younger than my age. I've always really looked my age. So I was, I was um, nervous about letting people see who I was um, and how old I really was because I thought people would not want to work with me because of it. Wow. And I'm sorry, we just had a flicker of electricity here. Hopefully, oh, yeah, I saw that. Uh, I saw we that. Keep, <laughs> hopefully we will keep our power. We're, we don't, we're not supposed to have any storms or anything, so I apologize. <laughs> okay. If something happens, it's, it's you know, nature. So, um, so I had a really good coach who said, I'm going to give you a challenge because she knew me well enough to know I like a good challenge. Yep. And she said, I'm going to challenge you to get on Facebook Live. And I said, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to change my clothes. I'm not going to put on makeup. I'm not doing anything. And I'm she goes, that's sing. fine. Just I'm not going to dance. <laughs> that's right. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to get on there and I'm going to talk. And she goes, that's fine. Just go do it. And I had this little tiara, which is um, just a little kid's tiara, right? For like a party. Right. And I stuck it on just to be goofy because I thought, I'm here. Okay. You want the real me? Here I come. I had a <laughs> pair of pajamas on. I had this TR on, no makeup, just like I don't have on now. And away I went. And the thing almost went viral. People wow. went nuts over it. There People you go. loved, oh, thanks for being real. Thanks for this. And I was like, holy moly. And then, of course, you know, once you start something, then people, I can't even tell you how many tiaras and other crazy headwear I have. I have something for every holiday, every color. Yep. Um, I have some beautiful, fancy tiaras. I have a lot of the simple ones. I have, I have antlers i have oh my god and wheels <laughs> I, it's it's really fun oh, so cool. now if i don't show up with a tiara they're like where's your tiara that's right that's become your so trademark it's become time. your signature that's right where's the tiara right. lady <laughs> that's exactly right <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so kathy i'd love to really get into this topic because you know this day and age every, everything's so busy we're all so time poor we're all struggling for help. We need it. We need assistance. So virtual experts and virtual assistants is sounds like a fantastic way to go. Um, so tell us a bit about your journey getting started as a virtual assistant and is it a great business? 
Yeah. So I'm going to start with the end, which is, it is an amazing business. Awesome. And Darren, I think a lot of times people are hesitant because when they hear the term virtual assistant, they think that's a secretary. I'm not a secretary. I don't want to be a secretary. Yeah. And that is so far from the truth. Yes, it did start out like that, but that is no longer what a virtual assistant is. That's why I came up with the term virtual expert, because I think it tells a little better story about what we really do. Nice. And literally, we do anything that a company needs done. Right. I used to say that we do everything except personally deliver coffee, and now we can have it delivered. That's so we right. can even do that. <laughs> you can definitely do that. <laughs> And do you yeah. have to be so it is a it's a great industry awesome. yeah and i mean obviously on that you have to be you have to know what you, where your skills lie i mean you can't do things that you don't know how to do but you can find maybe other people to help you do things that you don't know how to do yeah so darren one of the things that i will give as a big tip for anybody who number one is thinking about hiring a virtual expert and number two thinking about becoming a virtual expert is you're going to get the best quality person and you're going to earn the most money and be happiest in your business when you specialize right and when you specialize in something you really enjoy so if you're a bookkeeper right now and you're like, I really hate bookkeeping and I'm ready to get out of this, yep. even though that's a skill you already have, I highly recommend that you change what you're doing because I will guarantee you there are other skills that you have that you can immediately put to use yep. as a virtual assistant and that people will want. Right. Perfect. So leverage your skills and experience. Just think laterally. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And think what you enjoy. So for example, um, going back to who I am on my yeah. journey, I was a marketing manager at a fortune 500 company for almost 20 years. Wow. And I love marketing. Yep. Now I didn't love that job. That right. job was not marketing. I'm going to tell you what that job was. I was, um, what, was, what did they call me? And this is so funny because I wasn't wearing a tiara at that, <laughs> at that company, but they called me the spreadsheet queen. Because okay. all oh I did God. was what if scenarios on oh, spreadsheets. That's not fun. That like, marketing I, is meant to be creative and fun. Yes, oh, yes, oh. yes. So when my boss told me that I laughed and smiled too much and that I was never going to get promoted again unless I changed that about myself, I put together a plan to quit, found out about being a VA, became a virtual assistant, and I specialized in marketing for real estate agents. That's what I started out doing. Right. Fantastic. Well, and then I got to do that creative stuff you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. So it is very much a lateral move. Yep. And, um, and quite honestly, um, it's a lateral move even in income or more, depending yeah. on how high you want to go. Yeah. You can work part-time and earn full-time income or you can work full time and earn as, as much as you want. Wow, and have you always worked as a VA or virtual expert on your own or do you have a team of people that work with you? Yeah, so when I first started, I started on my own, of course. Yep. Um, it was way back in 2001 when almost nobody even knew what a VA was and before Google and everybody else called their AI VAs, yep. you know, virtual assistants is what they call those now. Yep. So yep. it gets a little confusing these days. Um, but I was by myself and my business grew to the point where I couldn't handle the work on right. my own and I wanted to keep growing it. Yeah. So I hired VA subcontractors um, and I found it very difficult to find people that knew what they were doing because, you know, it was such a new industry. Yeah. So I started teaching people just to get them to come in to work with me. What? So that's and one again. day I was like, what? I need to be charging for this. Wow. So that's when I started my training program. And as my training and coaching program grew, I had to make a decision, um, you know, on where to put my energy and I decided um, to sell my VA business and uh, go full-time into this and that's what I've been doing wow. since for about the past five years I've been doing fascinating. this exclusively. fascinating well I mean I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to get into that in a little bit because that's I want to hear more about how you do that but maybe for the audience tell us you know your definition or your uh, distinction between a virtual assistant and a virtual expert yeah on that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So one of the things that makes becoming a virtual assistant very easy is that there is no 
uh, certification. There's no regulation. There's no education required. There's no degree required or even preferred. Now, people are shocked by that a lot of times. Yeah. So the good news and the bad news is it's very easy to get into. Yeah. That's good news because, you know, it's easy to get into. It's bad news because there are a lot of people who get into it who really have no idea what they're doing. Correct. They're not professional. So the difference between a VA and a virtual expert is that a virtual expert has up-leveled their knowledge of how to run a business, how to be a profit generating virtual assistant, which becomes a virtual expert gotcha. to the business owners they work for. So instead of being an expense, they are profit generating. So they help you save money. They help you increase your bottom line by giving you ideas and, and helping you grow the revenue. I love so it. So that's, and there's, there's a three P's that I look for and that I teach. Love it's it. to be professional, yep. proactive, Yep. and problem solver. I like if it. If you can be those three things, yeah, that's a virtual expert. Wow, okay. And so what do you think, you know, people that are getting into the game, obviously you mentioned not specializing could be an issue. What are the, what are the other pitfalls that people usually fall into or traps they fall into when starting a virtual assistant business? Mm -hmm. So they look at it as a hobby yep. um, rather than as a real business. Mm -hmm. So you can start something part-time. You can start something as a side hustle while you're still working your job or while you're a mom raising your children. Um, but when you don't approach it in a professional manner, when you don't set it up legally as a business, when you don't do your bookkeeping and, you know, have contracts that are signed and all of those things that you need to do as a professional, yep. that is a huge problem. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that is probably the number one problem. And then believe it or not, the number one biggest complaint that clients, because I do a lot of surveys, a lot of, you know, what are clients complaining about with virtual assistants? And it's, it's the very basic. They don't meet deadlines. Yeah. And that's really another part of not taking this as a serious business. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Very true. And the other thing, I mean, I hear a lot from people is, Oh, how do I find a VA? There's so many VAs. Every time I, I start working with a VA, it takes me double the time because I have to train them and et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. So how do you get right. around all that? And I suppose that's, that's how you, mm -hmm. you're going to tell us how you put together and train VAs to start their own businesses. Yeah. So, um, Dear, and I actually have an offer for your group, if you don't mind, which oh. is um, anybody that's looking for a VA or a virtual expert, they're welcome to contact me um, and they can just email me and I will do a free VA matchmaking session for them. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, for your audience. And so I know these people um, very well. I know what they specialize in. I know their personalities. Yep. So I can easily match make them with your needs, your budget, what you're looking for. So in my opinion, that's a great way to do it. That is a great way. Um, yeah. <laughs> the other thing that you want to do is, of course, interview them yep. um, and follow up, like ask for who they've worked with in the past that you can talk with yep. and do that. Actually follow up with those people to find out what's good and bad about the person. Yeah. Um, but that's working actually, with the person, not the person really themselves. Point. It's almost <laughs> like, you know, treat it as like you're hiring somebody, do reference checks, do background checks, because you're yeah. in a way hiring that person, bringing that person into your business. That's right. And um, it, I mean, you absolutely are hiring them. You're hiring them as an independent contractor. Yeah. Um, you're hiring, you're not hiring them necessarily as an employee, which you can, but then to me that negates one of the big values of having a virtual assistant because you can use them as needed and not have to have that employee overhead. Uh, so, but you absolutely need to, cons to look at it just as seriously as if you were hiring an employee because they will eventually, if not right away, have access to a lot of your personal information yeah. and looking you know what the saying is um hire slowly fire quickly 
Yep. That absolutely is true with us. Yep. Do your due diligence to check into that virtual expert to make sure that they're legitimate. Check their references. Uh, just like you said, check their, uh, look at look them up online, see what's going on with them online, make sure yep. all is good. Look at their Facebook posts, just yeah, like you would if exactly. you were hiring an employee. See, yeah, are, are they posting crazy party pictures that yeah. you don't want to work with? <laughs> or maybe you want a crazy party person and that's yep. the perfect ideal person for you. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. do all of those things. The other thing that I recommend doing in that interview process, and by the way, I don't recommend asking for a resume okay. because they're independent contractors and an employee. Instead, ask for their website link. Nice. If they don't have that, ask for their LinkedIn profile. And if they don't have that, don't hire them. Yep. Yep. Because they haven't set <laughs> themselves up seriously. That's right. Yep. That's right. Very That's right. interesting. Exactly. And I mean, and as I mentioned, I mean, you know. Do, do virtual assistants generally work with just a couple of clients or just one client, or that just depends on what the amount of work that they're given? Yeah, it really does depend on the amount of work, but Darren, you've hit on another really important thing, which is to ask uh, uh, when you're doing that interview, ask how many clients do you currently have? Mm -hmm. How many do you have room for? Yeah. Um, because that's another thing that um, especially newer VAs can get in over their head very quickly with taking on too many clients yeah, and not realize and that they've everything. done that. And then all of a sudden, right. you know, deadlines aren't met because they're worrying about another, another client. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And so typically um, what, what my gauge is for how many clients a person should have, if they're working part-time, three clients is a good number. Okay. If they're working full time, um, somewhere between five and 11, depending on the type of work they're doing. And if it's, you know, one off projects or ongoing stuff. Yeah. And then you can also look at hiring instead of an individual, you can look at hiring, which you're kind of alluding to is um, someone that somebody like me who has built a team of VAs. Gotcha. Okay. The benefit to working with somebody who has a team of VAs is that then they always have a backup. Or if they get sick or if they're on vacation and you don't have to worry about having that backup for them. They've gotcha. got that built in. So you kind of, you're, 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 you're engaging yourself with a system that's always going to be there to help you. It's not one person. That's right. Yep, yep. And so you do that, do you? As well. I teach people how to do that. Yes. I teach women how to build teams of their own. Okay. Um, and how to grow as big as they want. If they want to grow to the point where they have an agency of their own and they have, you know, hundreds of people across the world that work for them. Yep. I teach them everything from how to work part-time, uh, 20 hours a week, earn 35,000 ish. And I'm using us dollars here mm -hmm. all the way up to, um, I haven't had anybody earn a million yet, but I have, <laughs> <laughs> I have had, uh, people I've trained earn multiple six figures. Fantastic. And I mean, I suppose the other thing yeah. that I'd love to know, and everybody's going to be asking and thinking, let's talk about cost and price. Obviously, you know, how long is yes. a piece of string, but maybe give us an idea as to, you know, what would be a, a reasonable rate or what would be too expensive or too cheap, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Um, great question. Because there is such a thing as too cheap. Yeah. Um, that's another red flag. Yeah. Two red flags to watch out for. One is if somebody says they can do everything, yep. that means they really can do nothing well, in my opinion. <laughs> They're not an expert at anything. Yep. Okay. Um, if you want a generalist, that is the original generic, um, what a virtual assistant was, was the generic admin. Yep. For that, I recommend no more than $25 an hour. Okay. And this is US. Okay. And again, that's US, yes. US dollars. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and no less than $15 an hour for wow. um, US based, Australia based. Um, yep. Third world countries, you can get people in um, uh, the Philippines, in India for $5 an hour, $10 an hour. Yep. My, um, you have to be careful with what you're actually outsourcing because there are other issues there and um, there can be good values there too. So sometimes if you're really looking to get the best value, I recommend a hybrid. Okay. okay. And what I mean by that is if you're in Australia, hire somebody in Australia to do your high end work, to do your writing, yeah. um, unless you're really marketing to the U S and then you might want to hire somebody in the U S to do that kind of work because they're going to know the U S lingo. Um, and then if you need coding done or something that can be done uh, at the odd times and um, 
that can be done less expensively than you can hire the India or Philippines people. Gotcha. And I love that. I mean, it's so fascinating these days, you know, I work as a photographer as well and I send a lot of my editing and processing overseas to different, you know, I call them VAs in yeah. a way, but they're kind of like some. Oh, they are VAs. Yeah. And yeah. I think it just works incredibly well. And it's almost like I've got a whole team of people behind me, but I'm just one person right. in the brand, in the business, and I'm just coordinating. Yep. So I think it's a fascinating industry. Yeah, Darren, I was interviewed on Forbes last year on this exact topic, right. which um, this journalist that interviewed me, she's written a book on and she's just fascinated with the number of people that are now building multiple million dollar businesses yep. and they are their only employee. Fantastic. Incredible. And they have a total virtual team that's independent contractors that are spread across the world. Yep. I mean, and years ago, this wouldn't have been able to have been done successfully because the technology wasn't there. Now the technology is right. there. We've got Zoom. We've got all these tools for collaboration. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's so easy. It's like I'm, I'm, you know, we're in the same time zone right now. It's like <laughs> you're next door. I know. Exactly. It's <laughs> awesome. Crazy. We're literally around the world from each other. And, it, and I feel, I do feel like you're right next door. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's kind of amazing. And that's also how your employee, your employees, your independent contractors will be. Yeah. Exactly like that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and if you use the right tools, just like you're talking about, like uh, whatever tools you like to use, it can be if your team gets big enough yeah. or if you just enjoy using, um, project management tools like Asana or Trello or any of those kind of things. You can put the information in there when your person across the world wakes up and starts to work, they log in and get the, get what they need to do. You don't even have to actually speak with them. In fact, I will tell you, I don't personally speak with most of my uh, team. I have a team of 24. Wow. And I don't personally speak with the majority of them. Oh, so ever. All done. All done. You know, we, yes, we Slack, we use Asana, we use Slack, we use, um, all of those things and uh, it, it just works beautifully. And Loom, like making a little video, if it's yep. something that you don't want to write out, you can use Loom and video the information to yep. them and leave that for them. The technology is just mind boggling these days. It's really incredible. Mm -hmm. yep. Really incredible. Mm -hmm. So just to recap yep. then, like for a, a generalist, between 50 mm -hmm. and 25 US an hour is a good, good yep. little sweet spot. Yep. For a specialist, yep. but by 25 and 50, would you say? Or? Yeah. So um, for a specialist, and it's going to vary a little bit depending on what they specialize in, and I can talk a little bit more about that, but I like to use the average of $45 an hour. If okay. they are really good at what they do already, okay. $45 an hour is a good average. Okay. If, they're, if they're learning still, you know, if they're in that learning process, then 30 or 35, but expect to go up by $5 or $10 an hour as they get better and better. Gotcha. Right. And so it depends on what your tolerance is for people to learn while they're working with you. Yeah. Um, you're not going to have to, you're going to, you're going to pay less, but you might have a slight um, delay. Yeah. And by the way, one of the things that a lot of people who haven't worked with a VA before don't realize is training, their training, that's on their time, not yours. Right. Yes. Okay. So even though they're learning, they're going to still do all the training work that they need to do on their time. So the clock doesn't start unless they're actively working on your project, on your tasks. Perfect. Perfect. And also like something that's coming to mind, I'm thinking out loud I'm sure a lot of people would be thinking the same is that, Oh yeah, look, we take on a virtual assistant, we get them trained up and after the two months they get too busy for us and they leave. But I suppose that's just like any employee. There's no difference. Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to treat them really well. Yeah. And pay them well. <laughs> <laughs> so pay them well, treat them well. And you know, remember you're uh, not, they're not your employee. So you, they, they can tell you what they will charge you. You can negotiate that with them, but in the end, you know, you guys either come to an agreement or you don't. Yeah. And when you do come to an agreement, then, um, and they get to know you. And I always say, give them 90 days yeah. unless they just are, you know, not meeting deadlines and things like that right away. If they're doing pretty well, yeah. give them 90 days after 90 days. If they're still not doing well, let them go. Gotcha. Um, but if they're doing well, keep them growing in your business and, um, the people that 
you know, I worked with for seven years. And then when I sold my business to the person that's still working with them, it's now been 12 years that they're wow. working with one person. Incredible. Yeah. And that is not unusual. Yeah. So to your point, it is a lot easier to keep somebody long term. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, thank you, a nice card, uh, Amazon gift card. Uh, yeah. You know, that's what I like to give things like yeah. that. Yeah. And they really appreciate it. Yep. You really Let have to know treat them that you just value like them. you've got to treat them like another part of your internal fiber of your team, of your culture. That's right. That, you know, they are an extension that's right. of your business and of your brand. So that's, that's exactly right. You maintain loyalty, really. Yeah. And um, I always like to say, you know, a lot of times in corporations, you consider bosses here, uh, employees here, and, you know, there's that staggering with virtual assistants and virtual experts. Yep. consider them even they are a business owner you are a business yep. owner treat them with that level of respect i love it i love it and it will go a really long way very interesting so tell us more kathy about your program and how you train vas and, and v's and i'd love to hear more about that yeah so um uh my philosophy is the people who come to me i'm looking for people who have already had some type of professional career Okay, because that's the majority of us, right? Um, we've already done something. Most of us aren't going straight into working as a VA. Most of us have already done something else. Whether you're a teacher, they make great VAs, or like I was, a manager, office manager, executive assistant, anything like that, you already have skills, you already have that professionalism, you already have work ethic. And so you don't need to learn that stuff. Yep, that's right. Um, a lot of VAs make the mistake when they start their business of learning skills, training, skills, training, skills, training, they don't know yet what they're going to specialize in. Sure. They don't have any clients yet. Yeah. So they're yeah. learning all of this stuff that they can't put into action and it's a waste of their time. Yeah. So I don't teach skills because that's easy. That's a dime a dozen. You can learn on YouTube, almost anything you want to learn these days. You can learn while you work for somebody and really learn it because you're putting it into action. Yeah. So what I teach is I teach how to build your business. Perfect. And, you know, um, entrepreneurs, business owners, they're going to call it marketing and sales. Uh, you know, I've, I have uh, learned what my uh, target market likes to call it because marketing and sales scares them. And I apologize. My phone is ringing. Oh, Hopefully my husband will pick that up in a second here. Um, I call it what they call it, which is they want to know how to find, get, and keep clients. Gotcha. And that's what I teach them. I teach them how to find, get, and keep clients, how to price how to write contracts wow. um, and all those templates and everything, all the contract templates, everything they need. Wow. Um, when I teach them, I teach them seven different ways of marketing. Oh. Um, and I teach them that many because they're going to want to pick and choose based on who their target market is, um, how they reach out to them and based on their own personality. Wow. Most people who are attracted to this are introverted women. Okay. Fascinating. So, you might, why? Um, my philosophy is women really love to support people. They really love that support role. Yeah. Men don't like it as much typically. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's why I say there's a few lucky men who do like it. <laughs> um, and the reason it's primarily introverts is because they like being in the background. They like that support role, not that client facing role. True. Yeah. But with that being said, a lot of people told me, well, a VA or a virtual expert could never be a salesperson. They would not be good at that. Huh. I have four salespeople on my team who all started out as VAs and are amazing yeah. and are just racking sales. Good on them. I mean, that's yeah. and they can, you know, they can uh, have that speciality as a VA as well, a sales VA. That's right. Whatever. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, you know, talking about how much you get paid, they get paid straight commission. Yeah. Right. They're sales. Yeah. Um, they make good money. Um, and uh, writing. Um, the top writer in my program right now is charging $100 an hour and turning clients away, wow. which is very, very Great. good. Yeah. Um, Infusionsoft, the going rate for a certified Infusionsoft VA in US is 75 an hour. Right. So you see, the more you specialize, the more expert you become, the higher you can charge. Absolutely. So this is a lucrative business model. Very, it is much more <laughs> lucrative than most people realize, wow. isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and could I just address one more thing yeah, about yeah. Uh, for people who are thinking about hiring VAs? Because a lot of people here, 45 an hour, 100 an hour, they're like, that's crazy. I only yeah. pay my employees, you know, 10 an hour. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's vastly different. Okay. Because number one, they're independent contractors. They're not working for you full time. If they are, they're an employee. Yeah. So they're working for you the number of hours that you need. So that's you cool. can set that budget. Yeah. You might use somebody at $45 an hour, 10 hours a month. Wow. Okay. Yeah, 10 right. hours a month, yeah. not a week even. Wow. So can you handle $450 a month? Or when you're just starting out and you want that general VA and you pay $25 an hour, that's 250 for 10 hours a month. Yeah. And VAs and virtual experts who are really good at what they do, they get two to three times more done in the same length of time as employees. True. Because they're focused, they know they're, they're experienced, they're specialists, they get it done, they move on. Yeah. And they're not at the, you know, they're not charging you for the time they're taking lunch and going to the bathroom and yep. chatting with others. <laughs> the clock is on or off. Love it. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. That's really good. And any other good advice for people that um, are looking to put on a VA, how they should choose a VA, anything else? Because that's obviously a very, very, you know, an area that everybody needs a lot of assistance with at the moment. Yeah. So my recommendation is hire before you think you really, before you get desperate, gotcha. because if you're desperate, if you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed. I don't know, even know what to do. Yeah. Um, you're not going to make as good a decisions. You're going to make some quicker decisions that maybe aren't as good. You're not going to take your time. Um, and you're going to be so far behind. It's going to feel really daunting to onboard that person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and by the way, the, people that I train, I teach them how to onboard their clients, not the other way around. Oh, I like it. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing that I highly recommend that a lot of people don't think about is um, SOP, standard operating procedures. So how you run your business. Yep. A lot of people say, you know, I really need those, but I don't have time to write them. Right. Well, when you hire a virtual expert or a virtual assistant, ask them to create the SOP for their job. Perfect. for their work gotcha. so then, and then they're already doing the work all they have to do is create the sops for that position perfect. and then you've got them got so it. don't and worry about creating god, that yourself and then if god forbid something happens and they leave you you can train someone up faster that's right that's exactly right love it love it yeah that's and a, always 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 have a contract in place always no matter what because that is protecting you as the client and the virtual assistant. Gotcha, gotcha. Because if something comes up, you have that contract, you can go back and look at it and know um, what you agreed to. Because I don't know about you, but life is so crazy and fast. Yeah. I can hire somebody in three months from now go, uh, that's not working out. What did I tell them? What, what contract did I sign? What did I say I would do? Yeah. How long do I have to give them notice? Yeah. <laughs> And, and all that's in a good contract. And for people that don't have contracts, a lot, for example, the people that you teach to be VAs, you have a contract template that you can adapt and use as well. Yes. And they will offer. They, and this is another sign of a good professional VA. If they say, would you, I, you know, I have a contract, I'd be happy to send you. Good. Nice. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. Then the, here's what I teach. Do not give your client homework. Yes. <laughs> if you give your client work to do, you are not a good VA. <laughs> no way. Exactly. We're trying, to, we're trying to give us more time and more focus, not take more of mm -hmm. our time away. That's right. 100%. That's right. I love it. I love that, the way, that philosophy. Yeah. Fantastic. And so, Kathy, if people want to get in touch with you to learn how to become a great VA or VE or even get you know, put in touch with other potential VAs that might suit them, How's the best way to do that? Yeah. Okay. So I had my uh, virtual expert set up a special page of for your listeners oh. and the link. <laughs> the, <No>. Yes. The <laughs> link is. <laughs> I, try, I try to do that all the time. The link is virtual expert training.com forward slash animation. Oh, I and it. there. Yeah, there they can, um, if you want to learn more about becoming a virtual expert, I have a couple of free, uh, a PDF that's free, a webinar that's free, um, a link to my YouTube video, 
and then I also have a, a, a sale on that will be on there on sale for, Fantastic. you know, as long as we've got that page up for $17 for a five day training program with me, that'll teach them the basics of getting started for $17. I know <laughs> primarily it's going it, to primarily, <laughs> primarily it's going to teach them. Um, they're going to be able to identify, is this really something I want to do? Beautiful what it means to be a professional proactive problem solver. And they, and I do, we have action items every day so that they're actually putting things in because just listening to me talk, you know, I know it's pretty exciting and everything, but <laughs> 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 you're not going to really learn unless you start doing. So every day you actually have action items that you do. And by the end of that five days, you're going to know if you want to do this or not, because I'm going to tell you the good, the bad and the ugly, right? Because right. of course there is, right? Of course. Um, you're going to learn what you can earn. We're going to, we can talk more about that. You also do an exercise where you start identifying what your area of specialization will be. Perfect. So yeah, five days, you're going to really have a very clear idea if this is right for you or not. And I make it that inexpensive because I want people to be able to identify if this is right for them or not. Yeah. It's not right for everybody. Not everybody's going to enjoy being um, behind their computer for, you know, half a day, all day. Yeah, and what a, what, a great, a what a great small little investment of $17 <laughs> just to kind of work out whether this is for you. I think that's a brilliant uh, that's little right. investment rather than going in, spending lots of money on programs, training, software, and then realizing down the track, oh, maybe this wasn't what I, would, what I was suited to. Yeah, and if you listen to what I teach in that, I will tell you right now, it will save you tens of thousands of dollars, yeah. just that $17. Yeah. Because I really tell you the mistakes that you could make and how much you could spend on those mistakes. Because you know what, Darren? I made those mistakes. <laughs> yep, yep, absolutely. I mean, you're destroying from all your experience. Yes. Well, then, well, thank you so much for that generous offer and that generous link. And I'm going to put all these yeah. details in the show notes, obviously. Um, but it's been an enlightening discussion, Kathy. I'm fascinated by this field and, you know, it's only, it's an emerging field. So, you know, it's going to be it's growing and growing and more and more people are going to be using VAs and VEs because, you know, that's the way the world's going. That's, that's right. Before COVID hit, it was already just skyrocketing. Yeah. But since COVID, you almost can't keep up with it. Um, the people that are already in this industry their businesses are growing. Um, they're earning more than they've ever earned since COVID hit because, because it's such a great need now. And, and they're, they're all and just they, delighted. They haven't to left their that. house. Nope. They haven't had to leave their house. Isn't that bad? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? Yep. I love it. What, 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 yep. what an interesting nope. way to work in an interesting field. Well done. Well, Kathy, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's been a fascinating discussion. And I always like to ask my guests at the end, Anything that you want to leave us with? Maybe you want to leave a tip for VAs or a tip for people that um, are wanting to start working with a VA. Anything you want to leave us with? Mm -hmm. Just make us think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I want to leave you with the one philosophy that I teach everyone and that, Darren, I know you know this because you interviewed wonderful people on mindset, um, but hopefully this can resonate with somebody else, which is, um, have an abundance mindset, not a scarcity or a poverty mindset wow. that will take you further in life than anything else um, that you can do. Because those people who believe that there is an unlimited amount and there's plenty for everyone, that's going to come true for them. Yeah. And those people who believe you've got to guard what you have because there's a limited amount, yep. that's going to come true for them. Yeah, I love it. And it's almost like simplifying it by saying the more you give, the more you get. Absolutely. Yep. So I yes, love it. I what love a that. great way to finish the show. Perfect little um, sound bite and, and, and video bite that we can all use in our lives and in our businesses from right now. So Kathy, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, and everybody out there, if you're looking to get into this wonderful world of VAs and VEs, Check out Kathy, check out that link. And I'm going to put all those details in the notes and uh, have a fantastic day. And we'll see you very, very soon for another episode of Playing With Perspective, the Suspended Animation Podcast. Bye for now.